Hello again, physics friends. Today we're going to talk about differentiation of vectors. In other words, in particular, taking the time derivative of position vectors or velocity vectors in order to find velocity or acceleration. So why don't we start with the following. Imagine you have an object um, that's marching along through space. So we have here x and y axes, and we have, I don't know, this is some animal crawling along on the ground, a bug, or maybe it's a bird in the air, and we're looking down from above, and we're mapping out the two-dimensional motion of this object. So its trajectory is labeled in blue. And um, the object, uh, the bug, let's say, is moving um, from bottom right to top left, and at each little instant of time, it's progressing to a different location. Okay? So what that means is that at some time, we could write down um, or draw a position vector to the bug. So let's say at some time the bug is at that location. Well, there's an associated position vector that I've drawn here, r, at that time, t. And then sometime later, our little bug marches along and is now no longer where it used to be, but it's progressed over here. So now I have another position vector r, but it's not at time t, it's some later time t plus delta t. Okay. So there is a difference in those two position vectors. In other words, to go from the black point to the purple point, I have to add some offset vector delta r such that the black vector r plus my red vector delta r gives me my purple vector. Okay, So let's write that out mathematically. We have um, r of t plus delta t. The second position vector is equal to the first plus delta r. Or equivalently, we can think of delta r as being the difference between the second position and the first. Now, if we want to find the velocity vector, um, the instantaneous velocity vector, then we'd like to reduce our delta t so that we consider only an infinitesimal time, and then we would be um, getting information about the instantaneous velocity of this bug at every little point in time. So we could write that in the following way. Let's say we want to know the velocity. Well, that's a derivative with respect to time of a position vector. Okay, and thinking back to what we mean um, by a derivative, we're saying let's look at infinitesimal time steps, um, delta t, we're going to let delta t go to zero. What is the limit of this delta r vector, that red vector, divided by the time interval delta t in the limit of very small time steps? Okay, well, we know how to write the numerator. Um, so we have the limit delta t goes to zero. Our numerator is simply t plus delta t minus r of t, and the denominator is our delta t. And, you know, if I make my time step smaller and smaller, I'm bringing my purple point closer and closer to my black point, and eventually my red difference vector, my difference position vector, is going to be a vector that's tangent to the blue curve, uh, the derivative is tangent to the curve, um, and that um, derivative vector would be um, given, would specify the velocity. Okay. okay, well now hopefully we have some intuition for what we mean by the derivative of the position vector, and let's talk about what this would look like in Cartesian coordinates. So we can write down the position vector as x in the x-hat direction plus a distance y in the y-hat direction, and so on. And we can then talk about taking the time derivative of that position vector as dr dt, the vector r, is the time derivative of um, the three components. Now, we know that x, y, and z, the coordinates, not the unit vectors, are changing in time as our little bug is moving through space. Okay? In this case, in our example is two-dimensional, the z-coordinate is zero for this example, but we can carry the z-coordinate symbolically 
um, and what we do will apply in three dimensions also. Okay, what about these unit vectors, x hat, y hat, and z hat? Well, let's think about that a little bit. Um, at the instant that the, um, for the first position vector, when the, when our little bug is sitting here at the black point, the x hat vector points to the right, length one, the y hat vector points straight up, and the z hat vector is out of the page, okay? How about sometime later, when our bug is over at the purple location? Uh, well, it's still the case that the x hat vector points to the right and the y hat vector points straight up and the z hat vector is out of the page. No matter what time we're talking about, no matter where the bug is, x hat will always point to the right, y hat always up and z hat always out. So what that tells us then is we have this important result that the time derivative of a unit vector in Cartesian coordinates, whether it's the x hat, y hat, or z hat time uh, unit vector rather, those time derivatives are zero. Okay, so if we'd like, we can think of distributing this um, derivative through these terms, and really we're going to have multiple. Uh, we have a, a product rule for each, right? We have the time derivative of x x hat plus the same for y, y hat, and z, z hat. So if we were to be really explicit about this, we would have dx dt in the x hat direction plus x dx hat dt plus, and then same for y and same for z. We already know that the time derivative of a unit vector is zero, and so what you are left with then is the following. I'll fill in only the non-zero terms here. At the end of the day, you just have the time derivative of the x-coordinate pointing in the x-hat direction plus the time derivative of the y-coordinate in the y-direction, and similar for the z. Okay, so the derivative of the possession of the position vector, which is the velocity vector, is simply dx dt, dy dt, and dz dt. There's your velocity in Cartesian coordinates. Okay. Let's see what happens in polar coordinates. You'll recall that we can write down the position vector. Um, as a distance from the origin, a scalar, multiplied by a direction, the unit vector r hat. So if we come back to our example of the bug crawling along, we have the position vector at some time r of t, that's the black dot, and then we have the position vector sometime later, and that's the purple dot. Now, let's think about these unit vectors. Okay, at the first point, we have a unit vector that points from the origin to the location of the bug at that instant, r hat. Okay, And then sometime later, the bug marches along, marches along, marches along, gets to the purple location. The unit vector there now points from the origin to this new direction, this new location, rather. Well, that is a different unit vector, right? The first r, I'll label it r1, and the second r hat, I'll label it r2. Those have the same length, so magnitude of r1 equals magnitude of r2, equals 1, it's a unit vector, but those are most certainly not the same vector. R1 is not R2. Why not? Well, it points in a different direction, and you can change a vector by changing its length or its direction, and we've changed its direction, so it's not the same vector. So what have we learned there? Well, we've learned in polar coordinates, in general, the unit vectors um, R hat, the unit vector r hat is not constant in time. And the same is true for the second unit vector, the phi hat vector. That vector in general, that unit vector, also changes in time. So we're not going to get into it now. We will come back to this later in the course. But the consequence of this fact is that when you take the derivative of the position vector in polar coordinates, now you have to pay attention to both terms in that product rule because we first have a dr dt in the r hat direction, but the derivative product rule tells us we also have r times 
the time derivative of the unit vector r hat, and that's not zero. So we have to account for both of those terms. And we certainly will in the future. We're going to come back to this exact topic, and what we're going to show in the future, um, in a future lesson, is that if you take the time derivative of the r hat unit vector, you can show that it's proportional to the phi hat vector. Okay, so if we come back to our previous diagram, at at that location, r of t, we have a unit vector r1 hat, and we have the second unit vector phi hat, okay, at that instant of time, and those vectors are perpendicular to each other. What we're going to show is that the direction in which r1 hat changes is parallel to the phi hat direction. Okay, so we're going to get two pieces in the velocity dr vector dt, there's going to be a rate of change of the distance from the origin in the radial direction. And then we also have to account for the motion in the direction that's perpendicular to the radial direction, and that's the phi hat component. And we're going to see this um, time derivative of the r hat unit vector is proportional to that second direction. Okay, so we're going to close out from there. We're just keep this in mind going forward that things get a little bit... Um, more complicated, we have more terms to keep track of when we talk about 2D polar coordinates, when we take time derivatives of position vectors. And um, when we come back to this topic, we're not only going to find the velocity vector, um, v, but we're also going to take the derivative of that to find the acceleration vector. And there's going to be a lot of terms <laughs> that we have to keep track of in there. Okay, but until then, uh, take care, be well, and we'll see you next time.